Hi, I'm James, and in this video I am taking a look at the BIOS options on the Dell Inspiron 15 3593 laptop. Now, you access the BIOS by pressing F2 and as the machine boots up, and unfortunately it doesn't output to the HDMI when in the BIOS, so I can't run this through the capture card, so I'm having to record with the camera here. Uh, there is a to toggle here for simple or advanced, uh, basic or advanced mode in the BIOS. I'm going to look through the options on advanced. Uh, simple just reduces what is available here. So the opening overview page gives us a look at the hardware specifications of the machine. We can see that I have upgraded this computer to 8GB of RAM and uh, added a M2 SSD as well. Um, and there are other videos on this channel showing how to do that and we can see this is Core i3 model, we can see uh, minimum base and turbo clock speeds and so on. We then can go down, we have boot options and in here you can toggle which devices you want to use to boot the machine from. So this will show all our bootable devices so it's not showing the third hard drive but if we plugged in a USB stick uh, that would be in here so we can say have multiple bootable devices but disable some of those and there are the usual options down here to toggle uh, add boot options remove them and so on system configuration we can set the time and date we can also control the UEFI network stack for booting and um, so to allow us to pixie boot and such features we can also toggle on and off our SATA ports, so I did this um, to disable the main hard drive when I was setting up the SSD and things like that. So rather than having to physically remove a drive, you can just turn it off. You have your SATA mode, and then information on the drives and smart reporting. Smart reporting is turned off by default, you may want to turn that on just so it can warn you of any pending drive failures. And the options to enable the audio, uh, enable or disable the speakers and microphone, external USB supports for booting, and the camera. So if you are sort of security conscious, you may want to disable the camera or disable booting from USB ports. Video lets us tweak the brightness settings for the LCD, and there is an eco power option, uh, which is dimming the or saving battery life with the screen. Uh, we have security options for setting passwords and so on for booting up the machine or entering the BIOS. And then some other options here which because we don't have the right module we can't enable which would I believe be for sort of trusted platform module or similar settings. And some more here for uh, SMM security migration and then the ability to turn on or off Intel platform trust technology and clearing settings from that. And again, Intel Software Guard extension, which is software controlled, and we can change that if we choose to. We have the option to set passwords for the BIOS and for booting the system and the hard drives. Secure boot, so this is enabled by default. Um, if you're running Windows 10 and want to be running it with signed drives and everything else, leave that on or if you are fiddling with non-UEFI boot modes or development, you may want to turn that off. Uh, key management for, I believe that is for the UEFI secure boot, adding keys if you need to, to sign uh, for signed software. Someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong there. Uh, then under performance, we have the usual options for the Intel processor settings. So this being a dual core processor, we can set it down to single core. Uh, we could disable speed step, C states, turbo boost, and hyper threading. Uh, for most people, obviously, you're not going to want to touch these um, because you're just really going to hamper the performance of the laptop, but there may be some cases where you need to. And then we also have power management for wake on AC, wake on USB. These are all switched off by default. We can have auto time to switch on, um, blocking sleep of the system and then charging configuration. Again, these on the default settings should all be absolutely as you want them, but there are options to change them around. And last one being Intel speed shift technology at the bottom here. We also have the ability to enable or disable the wireless LAN or Bluetooth. 
On post we can uh, set how the function key operates. So I tend to like the lock mode to be standard and secondary uh, function options for things like brightness, search, changing the display settings, locking the computer. So I do toggle that back to lock mode standard. And then we have options for warning messages to either prompt for input or continue. Uh, adapter warnings for the power supply. Fast boot, so if we want to speed up the boot of the machine, we can set that to minimal. As standard, it is on thorough, which is a slight surprise because that is going to slow down the post at times. We also have our full screen logo options and the ability to set how the touchpad uh, works when you have different things plugged in. And there is keyboard backlight. I don't believe this machine actually has a keyboard backlight, so that isn't really relevant. Virtualization options to turn on virtualization uh, technology and the direct I.O. And then in maintenance, we can set an asset tag. Once you have set this, you cannot change it. Um, then we have options for things like wiping the hard drives and whether we want to allow BIOS versions to be downgraded so you can go to a previous version. Coming to the end now, we have our system log, which sees when the system's been switched on and off. We can clear that. Thermal log, no events in here, but can be useful for tracking down some issues. And then also some of the options for support assist. So when this tries to reset the operating system or other things, uh, this isn't really going to function on this laptop because I have completely erased the hard drive already and reinstalled things myself. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Um, if you're looking at this particular laptop, it gives you an idea of the BIOS settings that are available. Um, do be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as I post them. Give us a like if you found this video helpful and check out the other videos on the channel with upgrade guides for the Dell Inspiron 3593 and also a first impressions video looking at just what I think about this machine in general. Thanks for watching.